Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. My name is Howard and in this video we're going to learn how to do credential dumping. In this series we have already shown us that we can access a domain environment during a pen test or red team engagement. As a normal user then end up escalating our privileges to system. So this is where we are right now. We have gained access to a machine in the domain through SQL injection and on this machine we escalated our privileges from a normal user to now being a system user. We gained access to system so as you can see here we can actually see we have a system beacon that we use um, execute assembly uh, with sweet potato to be able to escalate our privileges and we got an alert in our elastic sim so if we do a refresh here you'll see that we did invoke a lot of alerts. Now we have a system beacon what do we do? We can move on to credential access and enumeration. With system, we can pretty much interact with a lot of credentials on the system, including administrator hashes. So let's do that. Instead of creating a user or doing any of the other stuff, let's use credential dumping. Adaptic C2, like any other C2 that are out there, gives us the ability to run beacon object files or buffs. And these allow us to interact with system credentials. Uh, we have a creds buff in the Adaptic C2 framework that we have. And here's the usage. This comes pre-installed. If you have not already installed Adaptic C2, that's the one that we're using here. So we have a few options here. We can have a separate credentials using auto logon. So if there's any auto logon credentials, we should be able to access them. So let's go and do that in our system beacon. If the system is set up for any auto logon, we should be able to see that. So auto logon in the bottom here and hit enter. Any credentials that are being used, our beacon object file through Adaptic C2 should be able to tell us. So as you can see, we have local user who is set to automatically sign into the system and the password is password. So as a person who is doing a pen test or a red team, we document finally we have a real credential. This is a local user, of course. Um, so this is a credential for a local account, not necessarily a domain account. This local user might be actually part of the administrators on the machine so we can actually try to use this. So let's document this on the side and say we now have one credential. With a buff we can ask for credentials so this will prompt the system for credentials. So let's do this. So we are signed in using RDP. We're going to use ask creds. This is where we want to pop up a box so that the user can give us their username and password. And please enter your password. Capital P. Yeah. There we go. Please verify Windows credentials. Okay, let's give it. If you were a normal user, this is what you probably see, right? So now let's assume the user fail for this auto logon and they say password with capital P. You say, okay. The box goes away regardless of what they put there. So this does not guarantee you as a attacker that this user gave you a real password, by the way. But the box went away. And here we got a password. So if this was a normal user, they see a box pop up. This happens all the time in Windows environments. So using this buff, we can ask a user for a password. We already have a password from the auto logon, but this is another way we can do it. Then finally, we can also just do a hash dump. We can ask it like, hey, dump all the hashes. From my test, this actually does not give you the correct hash, as you see here. But we can just type hash dump. This will run as a beacon object file in the background to dump system hashes. All right, as you can see, we have in the administrator in the boot key. This administrator hash here might be the one that's cached, but it might not be the correct one. So this is us using beacon object files to interact with the system after we have compromised it and get credentials using auto logon if it's already set up prompting a user for a password and also doing using hash dump. This one dumped the same and system. All right, now that we have the credentials, we can even get more credentials using secretsdump.py. So here in our write-up, I showed you like, hey, we can use, you know, this buff like I was just showing you there. Now let's go and use if winrm to sign into the system. I tried to dump Sam and also system hashes using the beacon 
it didn't work. So in most cases, when we were doing like hack the box and things like that, we're using things like Evil WinRM. Every time we get a password, you get a Evil WinRM. I'm going to run it here. This might not be the most OPSEC safe way, but I want to show you another way that you can interact with the system and still be able to dump our uh, hashes. We're saying, hey, if WinRM sign into our machine, so in your Etsy host, you need to have an entry for this, like this. So in your Etsy host, make sure you defined like, hey, 1033 is SQL.ninja Academy. That entry needs to be there in order for this to run. Otherwise, it won't. We're using local user, which is what we saw in the auto logon, and the password of password, which is what we had. So this is how you can use one of the passwords that you found if you didn't want to use a buff like what I have there, or if you didn't have a C2. An attacker can also just dump credentials directly using a terminal once they have access to the system. They can run something like reg save to dump the same. So I'm going to dump same system so that we can actually access all system hashes. What's the buff? Is this so only gave us just a few. So we're saying, hey, reg save, save this same file in our local user do documents, because that's where we are. And here we have a same database file. Then we also want the system and security. Those three combined will give us all system creds that we can use secretsdump.py uh, to access. So let's do that for system as well. This will be helpful if the environment is not being monitored aggressively. I'm doing this, as you see here, we're probably getting caught uh, by our EDR. Then also let's get security. This should definitely trigger some alerts. If it doesn't, something is suspicious here. And then we're going to download all these three. Uh, let's cancel. All right, now that I did that with if WinRM, I have system sam. Then I'm going to actually exit and uh, make the SQL. CD SQL. I want to work from the SQL folder so that I can download those files in the cleaner. Now I can rerun if WinRM. And then I can download those three files. Download the same. Download system. All right, now we need to download the security file. Okay, and we exit our if WinRM ls. Now we have these three files. From these fi three files, we should now be able to get even more credentials that our both might not have uh, access. So now we're going to run secrets.dump.py. You might run into impacket errors here. If you do, go ahead and install impacket. Okay. So, of course, I don't have secrets dump.py. So, what I like to do is I like to say locate. It, it already comes with Kali. Then let's just copy it to my current folder. All right. Now that we have secrets dump here in those two files, watch what happens. And as we can see here, we now have more passwords. Okay. So, default password is password. However, we have the administrator. Notice that the hash for the administrator now is this full hash here. We copy these. Let's just put these in our um, notes for now. Okay, so after we dump all the credentials using secrets dump from the three files that we downloaded, we can even use secretsdump.py to go using now the administrator's hash and download even more secrets from the system. So if we run this command here, Use the administrator hash, which is the one that we found here. Highlight it here. Reach out to my system using the administrator information that I have and dump the creds. This is again kind of redundant, but multiple ways you can interact with the systems to get your hashes. If you wanted, let's say you ran into the administrator's hash somewhere. Here's another way you can dump. It's the same information, but sometimes depending on which, how you interact with these credentials, you might get more, you might get less. For example, Reaching out using the administrator, now we even get more uh, on the SQL server here. So if you compare the results that we just got compared to the one that we got earlier are different. Even though we're system, we were able to access these without getting the machine AES account um, password, by the way, as you can see here, Academy SQL. So we're actually interacting with domain creds here. Windows is very weird. Depending on how you touch the creds, you get more, you get less. 
system, we got something. Now as administrator, we're getting these here. Uh, I would also like to d document these, because as you can see, we now have AES keys here that we can even use further. Of course, I wouldn't document our notes and put them in Git. This is just for learning purposes so that we can actually see them here. But uh, you need to keep these secrets in a secure way. Document them so that you don't get hacked after you access your system. All right. So now we have the AES key here. This is very important when you try to now interact with the domain, especially this is for SQL on the Academy domain. So that's why this is very interesting and also why we should get it. Now we have that we have this AES system, we can use get users and if, interact with the system to see if we can query for all kinds of information about the domain. But this video was mostly for interacting with credentials and I showed you how we can get the credentials. In the next video, we're going to use these credentials to enumerate the domain and we'll also move on and actually run Bloodhound. And using these credentials and the outcome of Bloodhound, we should now be able to laterally move to another machine. We access credentials and I hope you learned something here. Otherwise, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.